Hey guys, and welcome to this second side dish tutorial. Now, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can combine two objects that are positioned on different render layers um, to get it as close as possible to an actual render where they would be on the same layer, okay? And um, I already did that kind of in the first steps in preparation tutorial number 22, but this is a step further, and I just thought, since we're working with um, alphas and unpremultiplied alphas and stuff, it's, it's a bit too much for first steps and preparations. So I just created a separate side dish tutorial. Um, so yeah, for those of you who did make it to the tutorial, you will more or less recognize this scene. Um, and you will alre already know what it's all about. For those who didn't, um, you're free to watch the mentioned episode, episode 22 in the uh, first steps preparation series, or you can just try to follow along here. It's not that complicated to begin with, but um, there's going to be come up a bit of compositor work. Okay, so we've got one cube on the first layer, one cube on the second layer. We've got a lamp that is on both layers. We've got a camera, of course, and then we have set up four render layers. We've got the first render layer, which on which we have this cube. We do not have sky checked there, and we have all C checked there. Okay. Then we have a second render layer, which features the second cube, or that thing with the handle. Um, it does not have sky checked, and it has it does not have all C checked, okay? Then we've got the third render layer, which is a, an empty layer, which just provides the sky for us, which we are going to mask out in the tutorial, uh, in the compositor. And then we've got a fourth layer, which just um, has both layers on it, which just shows us what it would look like if we had not taken it apart, okay? And... Well, our thing, our sky is just this bright, ugly color there, okay? So, yeah, let's make a, a render now. And, yeah, right now, this is our output. This is the um, finished render of the um, uh, of the render layer that features both, both um, scenes, uh, both layers, so as if they were on the same layer. And down here we've got the result that you get when combining it afterwards, okay? You can see a difference, a slight difference though. Also up here you can see a slight difference. But it isn't something that you need to worry about, okay? And to get this kind of scene otherwise would be quite um, tricky and quite, or nearly impossible, okay? I'll try to get it done without this technique and we'll see what it looks like and where the problem lies, okay? So right now, let's just add in a alpha over, okay? And let's actually duplicate those two layers to over there. Now this is the layer of the upper cube, and this is the layer of the lower cube. And we, you can see there's a part masked out here, which is... Um, that part being masked out, and you can see this part over here is actually not a mask. If we change to this view, that's actually just a shadow that it throws. Okay, and if you want to combine them together, you would usually you would use this image here, like this. You would then put in this image, and you would take that alpha over there, and you would get this result. Okay, and um, as you can see, it's quite a bit different from that. Okay, you can see around here we've got issues, and over there as well, and it's just in general it's quite dark around those uh, those lines where they connect. Okay, and the reason for that is that we are using pre-multiplied um, images and pre-multiplied alphas or just um, anti-aliased alphas, and it, it's like a double anti-aliasing going on there. Okay, so. And last but not least, we also need to have our sky back because um, in our final image we do have a sky, which is this one over there. And in order to com composite that onto um, this, we would have to add it at some point, okay? So one thing we could do, we could just say, okay, we are using this image, and uh, this one, and we put that on top of that. So we could as well just use a sky for this render layer here, which would be render layer number, let me just see. 001, okay, but if we are going to change that to sky, then you can see what happens is this 
Uh, that's actually the wrong one. Let me just see. Is this okay? So this is the finished one, and that's our pro ours. And the problem is this this um, part over here, okay. And the reason for that problem is that um, we have this part anti-aliased, we have this part anti-aliased, and everywhere where this this anti-aliased part overlaps, you actually get um, a blue a, this blue line, which is certainly not something you want because it's something you can immediately see. Okay. So what we would basically have to do, we ha we'd have to um, combine those um, un-anti-aliased, okay? And we can do that. We can just go to um, Converter and use a Alpha Convert and throw that in to the image line from the um, layer that's actually going to be composited onto the other one and change that from pre uh, Primal to Key, okay? But you can see it doesn't really change a lot. It looks better over here, but we still have this line. And if we shift duplicate that to over here, you can see this looks really ugly and it doesn't really work. So instead, we're once again going to dis uh, disable sky over here. Um, we're going to control X that out, that one as well. And then we're once again back at where we were before. Now, if we want to add in that sky, then what we'd have to do is quite simple. We'd have to combine the two alphas, and then according to those alphas, we'd have to mix that in. So, Shift A, color mix. And we'd have to mix that on top of that. And let's just change that to 0.5 for now. You can see what happens. This obviously doesn't work. So, we need this alpha input. We're going to do that by. Um, color, mix, and then we would have to mix those alphas together. So we'd basically have to mix the upper alpha with the lower alpha according to the lower alpha, which gives us this output. And you can already see this, this, this doesn't really work. So if I use that for over here, we then get this result. And this is by far worse than everything we had before, okay? So this doesn't work. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use add over here, okay? Because now you can see, um, and also we're going to take out this factor. Now you can see those lines are gone, okay? But the problem is, as you might be, if you're familiar with the add node, it actually adds this value onto this. So um, we have one wherever there's white, but here where we are adding white onto white, we actually then have a value of two, which is a problem because now if you use that as the factor, you can see we get this strange thing here because we have um, too strong of an alpha. And to change that, we are going to use a map value. So we're going to use a converter. No, we're going to use a vector map value. Oh, throw that in here. And now we're just going to use minimum and use maximum. And now you can see that problem is gone. However, um, there should be another issue. Let me just see. Yeah, I cannot find the issue, but the problem can be that there are some blue lines over here where those uh, two alphas are added onto each other, okay? Um, if you have that, just throw those map values additionally in behind this. Let me just see if that makes a difference. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be necessary in this case, so let's just um, delete them again. So, now we have um, an image that is somewhat similar to the the actual render, okay? But it's still not really the same. And as you can see, first of all, um, the way we now add it in the sky doesn't really gives us this dark, ugly border there, which we do not have in our original render. And also, we have still some issues going on over here and over here. We want to take um, care of them as well. So what we're going to do, we're going to once again do the thing we did before. We're going to add in a um, alpha converter, we're using that on this one and duplicate on this one as... W no, not on this one actually. It still doesn't really look that much better. Uh, let me just see why that could be. Oh, primal to key. Okay, now it looks better. Now you can see it is already quite a bit closer to that. Okay, especially around here, it lo really looks much, does look much better. Um, and also over here, it is quite closer than before. 
if you mute that you can see this is much stronger and now with that unmuted it is less strong now let me explain what we just did here um, previously we had this image and wherever this alpha is white we we added this image okay the problem here is that uh, this image is anti-aliased you can see this the soft lines there and now by mixing it according to this anti-aliased alpha we're basically anti-aliasing it again which is not something you want to do therefore what you're going to do we we, we de-anti-aliased um, the main image and by adding it according to this anti-aliased um, alpha we anti-aliased it again creating this result that is just as clean as this result but has less um, stre streaks and stuff like that okay so that worked out just fine the problem is we still haven't solved this those dark lines surrounding the objects just here the way we're going to do that is we're going to make sure that um, those two images are actually before we composite them together over here okay we're going to make sure that they are de-anti-aliased on this border as well and the way we do that we're just going to use that and as you might know usually when you anti-aliase something you have for example this image okay but let's now imagine this is not anti-aliased anti -aliased. let's imagine we have a, sh a check deck over here and surrounding um let me just see let's imagine we, we have checked x everywhere over here okay those were all checked and not smooth as they are right now now in order to anti-aliase them we, we would multiply them with this anti-aliased um, alpha but what we're going to do now is the opposite instead of multiplying we're going to divide it okay so we add in a color divide uh, mix we change the mode to divide we're going to add that in here and we're going to add that as, f as in there and then see what that looks like and you can see it really worked out just fine you can see this completely checked ugly um, de-anti-aliased um, image now it doesn't work if you go to this view because um, because there are transparent values over here but you, here you can see what actually happens um, and now what we're going to do we are going to add it back together according to the anti-aliased value anti is alpha which then gives us our clean output now you can see this does look fairly much like the original okay so there is a little bit of something going on over here you can see there but other than that it's nearly identical and let me just see if I forgot something uh, I don't think so I think we covered everything Yeah, now the only thing that's weird is if over here you can see, if I mute those two map values. Okay, my mistake, I, I made it something wrong there apparently. Okay, so you can see this is our final node tree on how to um, composite those things together to get a result as similar as possible to the original. Okay, and now if you want, you could, you could, you could easily just um, influence the different cubes. You could, for example, say, throw in an RGB curve on this one, uh, on this one. And now you could just manipulate that however you want. And you can see it always looks as if they were actually composited together the way they're supposed to be without having anything weird going on. Give it less green as well. Make the whole thing brighter or darker or create whatever you want. And in the end, it still just always in a way fits, okay? And that was the goal of this tutorial. Um, yeah, so I hope you were able to grasp how um, the alphas work, how, why it's important to unpre-multiply the image, um, how we were able to re-multiply it then afterwards by mixing things together according to this anti-aliased uh, alpha. And yeah. Okay, um, there is one last thing I forgot to mention. That I'd like to ask at, at uh, that, that, which I would like to add at this point, and that is that we learned over here quite easily how we can unpre-multiply or um, de-anti-aliase 
or image. But how do you do that with the alpha exactly, okay? Because right now, if I duplicate that, if I use the alpha as the input, you can see it doesn't work. The alpha is still as smooth as always, okay? And that is because I don't really know why. It's just that the alpha converter doesn't work, and there's another way. The same we used actually over here where we divided th things. Let's just control X delete that. Let's duplicate the, divi the division um, node there. And now let's just divide the alpha by the alpha itself, like this. And you can see now you have a um, de-anti-aliased jacked alpha, which can be useful uh, if you, as I showed you here, if you unpre-multiply an image, and then if you want to composite that image unpre-multiplied onto something else, then you need a um, de-anti-aliased uh, alpha, and this is how you can reach it, just by dividing it by itself. Maybe you could even, let me just see something. Maybe you could even go to mm, Converter, Math, Divide, put that in there, Control X, one, zero, zero. That's not a good idea. Okay, apparently it doesn't really work. Yeah, it's the same thing. You can either use a divide node, but you also have to plug it in down here, of course. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. If you have any kind of questions or ideas or suggestions, please post them in the comments below each video. Thank you for watching and see you next time.